It's mid-morning on Friday, and we've taken care of all of the farm chores for the day, and now we're all ready to get started on getting some work done in the shop. It's a pretty nice day out there today. It's mid-30s right now, and it's supposed to hit 39 degrees at the end of the day. But there's a bit of a cold wind that's still blowing around out there, and so we've opted to keep the door closed today. Even though the light would be nice, it's just keeping everything a little bit more comfortable inside the shop. We got a fire started in the fireplace. That's going to help bring up the temperatures inside a little bit. And it'll also dry out the air inside so that the mud will cure a little bit faster. Ola is starting out with some 90 minute hot mud to go through and do any pre-filling on any areas that need it to make sure that the taping goes smoothly. While she does that, I'm gonna try to wrap up this compressor room on the inside and the outside, getting all the last of the walls up. There's also a couple of strips of drywall that need to go up near the stairs to finish everything out. And of course, like usual, the boys are here for support and to help learn a few things along the way. We had yet another winter storm warning issued for today. Uh, it's supposed to start at noon and go through 5 a.m. the next day. And they said that it's supposed to hit somewhere between 7 to 12 inches of snow above the 6,000 foot elevation. Our shop here is at 5,700 feet elevation, so we're right on the cusp. And with that many inches of snow expected, who knows what that could mean for us. So we're going to just ride it out inside the shop and see what it does. The snowblower is still inoperable right now. And even though this storm says that there could be 7 to 12 inches, I decided that I'm not terribly worried about running the snowblower through it anyway. Because the temperatures are so warm, there's going to be so much slush on the roads, even if it does snow that that's gonna just cause that snowblower to plug up relentlessly. So rather than do that, if anything needs to get moved around, I'll put the big box scraper on and push it down to an area that I can gather it and then scoop it up and push it off the hill. This little intake grate with the built-in furnace filter is here for the air compressor. The air compressor is going to require a fairly large volume of air readily available to it. Without that intake grate, this room would be so choked off that it would likely burn up the air compressor in a very short period of time. So my intention with that is not necessarily to make the room a dust-free room. It's just to minimize some of the dust and dirt that's going to be floating around in the air as it draws in the air. The air compressor does have its own filter, but if I can pre-screen the air just a little bit going in, it'll only serve to help. I'm hoping that it will at least minimize some of the dust that settles on the shelves and the materials that I hope to store inside of this little room. I don't plan on keeping a whole lot of materials in there, but I'll likely keep things like my bolt assortment bin, and maintenance items like filters, fluids, shop aerosols, items like that that need to be around but stored in a more clean environment than out in the shop. As Ola makes her way around the room, she's looking at the joints to make sure that they'll receive mud and also looking for any damages to the drywall. Any place where the paper's bubbled because the drywall beneath is crushed or crumbled She's cutting away the paper and opening up and relieving all of the crumbly bits to then hit it with pre-fill so that those spots will become a solid piece of wall again. I went to put this piece of plywood inside the room to get it up on the wall and thought, oh man, I'm not sure if it's going to fit in here. Then Everest stepped up and said, let me try. I think I can do it. And he was able to get it worked out. He figured out the puzzle of how to get it in there just right. I really didn't want to cut that sheet and put it on with the seam in the middle of it since it's such a visible wall. 
we have the regular upcut, it'll peel all these fibers up and just leave these little stickers all along that edge, right? Yeah. So the downcut blade is going to force through those fibers going down, and it'll leave a smooth, <clears throat> smooth cut. Okay. Okay. So one thing, like when we use the skill saw, mm -hmm. the blade on the skill saw comes forward; it comes up, right? Mm -hmm. So it tears through as it cuts on the front cut. So a finished cut, you can, if you can, you turn it so that you're cutting from the back side of it. So it'll, same reason. Then it'll be essentially like a down cut. It'll pull up through the fibers mm -hmm. into the board so it'll leave a clean edge. All right. Okay. So you got your holes? Yeah. Let's go ahead and connect your dots and your lines. It's already there for you. <clears throat> Remember to squeeze the trigger hard so you're getting full force, okay? So it's moving fully. And just let it slowly work its way through. Put your other, your second hand up here to keep that pushing against. Since it's a down cut, it's gonna wanna lift the saw. Yeah. Yeah. Put extra pressure on the head here to keep it flat against. And then just let the saw slowly work its way through as fast as it'll cut. Three more to go. You might have to go the other way. I think there's more distance on that side. Not good left hand. <laughs> we got a staple. <laughs> It'll be okay. It'll cut through it. Okay. Okay, so this vent is 66 inches to the center of it from the floor. And when I measured the air compressor, the air filter on the air compressor was 66 inches to the center of it. So <clears throat> it will sit in here and the air intake side of the compressor is this side. So it should sit basically right dead center of this filter um, for the most part. And then my wiring for it will come right to here so i can wire from the motor right down to here and the compressor can sit in the corner and be out of the way it's just a 16 by 16 by one inch filter so it's easy to change out easy to check and should give maximum volume without any problems into the compressor like i said it's that's a lot more volume coming through that filter than through the little like four inch canister filter that's on the air compressor anyway so it shouldn't have any issues. I had to run into town real quick to get a couple of things before the stores closed for the evening. So I had Everest take over where I left off. We had a few pieces of insulation left over, so I wanted him to put those in along the bottom of the stair stringers. And that's simply for noise reduction. After he gets that installed, I wanted him to try his hand at installing the drywall in the ceiling above the entry door on the underside of the landing as well as a little piece that goes across the face of the landing the snow cleared off of the roof and it came down with such speed and fury it actually landed clear over here and because of that cascaded off and landed clear down here you know that pile's getting tall when it's Got a full slope all the way to here. And that's a 14 foot flat next to the shop. Everest has never actually done drywall by himself. He's helped me several times and he's done the measuring for me. 
but he's never cut it and he's never installed it other than just helping out with a few screws. So this was a really good opportunity for him to try out the skills he's been picking up just from hanging out and helping out. He's really done a pretty dang good job of putting it up, especially for his first time. He did have to bring it back down and trim it a little bit, which it seems like that's how it goes with drywall. You cut it just right and it seems to grow an inch. Once he got it sized just right and Logan came over to help him hold it, then he was able to get enough screws in there to get it into place. I came back through and put the corner strip on and put a couple of extra screws in just to make sure that it wouldn't sag over time. I definitely got a lot of the hot mudding done. The reason why we put hot mud is is because it dries quick and it doesn't crack yep. and we can put the tape over it and it will look nice. And it's really, to me, hot mud is like the all time fixer of whatever you banged up in the process of <laughs> putting sheetrock up. So um, when Mark was uh, framing up the wall over here, there was actually a few holes that I had to cut out and dig out. He banged it against the sheetrock. He had no choice, but that's what happens. I had to fix one box, which is really good for installing sheetrock. If you have a big gap, you can close in the gap and your tape just lays in really nice. The other thing that I did while I was doing hot mudding is I had my razor blade and any gap, any sheetrock that was extremely too close um, and it was super, super tight, I made like a V in it because you want the mud to be accepted and the tape to lay down nice and flat. So it kind of like sucks in and it binds the two sheets together without cracking. Now, I'm still kind of feeling it. My shoulders don't really hurt yet. We'll see when I wake up. We'll just keep going. I only have two days until I gotta go back to work for four days. Four days something like that. <laughs> so, I kind of want to get it done. With hot mud, it is really difficult to sand. And I think the reason, what's that poly what in it? Polymerase. Polymerase in it. Is the adhesive portion of it and allows it to cure without drying and shrinking and cracking, mm -hmm. that bit makes it hard and that's difficult to sand. And no one really likes the sanding part. The mudding is the funnest part, right? Because it's <laughs> like you go, oh, this is my second layer. Oh, this is my third layer. Okay, now I'm finishing, you know? It's done. Took me four hours, five hours, what time is it? I'm gonna start mudding. I'm gonna finish that up while you do some of that just so that this outside is pretty well wrapped up and good in here. Yeah, it looks. So we'll use those couple of pieces of material to get this all set, and then I'll wrap the out and I'll put my the corner bead on. Okay. Up here, so that you're all set to dry well. I'm gonna mix my mud and get started.
there's one thing for sure about this sweet woman. When she sets her mind to a task and she wants to get after it, that's what she does. She doesn't hesitate and she doesn't put it off. She just stays with it till she feels like she's done. Ola does a really good job. She's careful and takes her time with her knife work and makes a pretty good finished product when she's done. She tries pretty hard to make sure that she's not leaving high ridges from her knife or any extra thick coats or anything like that. She scrapes it just enough, keeps plenty of mud behind the tape and on top, but also does a good job of cleaning up her scrapes as she goes. Me, on the other hand, I can do a pretty dang good job if I take enough time to be slow and methodical about it. My wife is kind enough to let me borrow her knife. <laughs> Got just a little bit of mud left in the pan after doing those joints, so I'm gonna hit just the first little float coat. As you can see, Especially as the night gets on, I tend to get in a little bit of a hurry and I end up making a lot more knife work for myself and not doing quite as nice a job in the finish. So I'm going to have to do a little bit extra sanding, especially compared to what Ola does. We snow plow the roads and we snow blow and we do everything like that. And over time, it eventually just builds up a snowpack that becomes the road surface for the winter. As it starts to warm up, and everybody knows this, that deals with any kind of snowpack, as it warms up, that snowpack loosens up and gets fluffy, and slushy, and starts to break up. What is a six or eight inch snowpack turns into a foot of loose, wet, sloppy snow. This is the easy part. There's a couple of pretty bad spots that are pretty long. So that's what we're dealing with right now. 
I had to drive into town yesterday afternoon for a couple of things. It was pretty rough getting in and out. We've got some pretty good ruts that were forming yesterday. And I drove out this morning and they were still there. About one o'clock today, now we'll see that the sun's been on it, just how bad the ruts are gonna get. We've had a big storm warning that was supposed to be seven to 12 inches. Thankfully, none of that actually happened and we didn't get any snow. But we had warm weather all day yesterday and everything loosened up. I'm probably gonna come down here with the tractor and just push some of this big loose fluff into an area that I can push it off a hill. Cause this is gonna get deep. I got home and got the tractor started. I had considered taking the big scraper blade down to push it all to the bottom of the hill and then push it off, but I opted for the bucket instead. I decided that if I got the pile down to the bottom of the hill, I wasn't sure I'd be able to get it up and over the windrow wall with the box scraper. Great minds think alike because in the time it took me to drive back down, Others had arrived with the same intentions. There's a couple of spots along the road where the water naturally drains off and exits the road and heads for the creek. This is one of them. So I took a minute to try to dig out enough of the snow to open up that drainage point off the shoulder of the road. That way there's a spot for all of the water to run out as this slush continues to melt and run down the hill. I finished up a couple of these drainage locations while my friend finished off the main part of the road with his plow. Over the course of the next few weeks, this is probably something we're going to have to continually revisit just to make sure that everything stays open and we can get it to and from. <laughs> 